Hey everyone, this is Snark with Snark's Domain. Today I decided to test out some thermal pastes in a race to 100 degrees Celsius. So yeah, let's get into it and see how they did. Alright, so just in case you guys aren't familiar with my test apparatus, I bought a hot plate and a temperature sensor off of Amazon and then I went to a local uh, metal store and bought two pieces of solid copper round bar, uh, each measuring an inch and a half in diameter and an inch and a half long. I then spent, oh, I don't know, five, six hours lapping those uh, copper blocks flat on all sides. Uh, and I used a diaflat lapping plate, which is um, flat to half of a thousandth of an inch across the entire surface. So they're extremely flat. And I've, then I bored a hole in the, the top piece and embedded the temperature sensor in there with some low temp solder that melts at 138 degrees Celsius. And I drilled three uh, bolt holes, basically, and then threaded the bottom piece so that I'd be able to put a thermal interface material between the two tighten it down and then uh, put it on the hot plate. I use MX4 thermal paste on the hot plate uh, for every single test just to keep things consistent and that was the paste I could buy in bulk for a uh, reasonable price. So in these tests I was basically um, testing thermal pastes and I think there's a problem with my test apparatus. It's too flat uh, so it's basically making nearly perfect metal to metal contact. So yeah, it's uh, I don't think the results are conclusive yet. I'm probably going to have to do this test again a little bit differently. But uh, let's get into the results anyways. So the first test I did was just metal to metal, no thermal paste between the two pieces, um, but still using the MX4 on the hot plate itself and it took 4 minutes and 40 seconds to reach 100 degrees Celsius. Next I tested uh, Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut. Uh, it's a carbon mat that you can, you know, it does conduct electricity but you can put it on a CPU uh, between a normal CPU and a cooler. You don't want to use it on your GPU on the uh, on the die because on a GPU the die is bare so um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend using Carbonaut on that, at least myself. Uh, next, I tested uh, Arctic Silver MX4, and it took 4 minutes and 25 seconds to reach 100 degrees Celsius. Then I tested Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, uh, which is one of my go-tos for when I repaste a GPU, and it took 4 minutes and 28 seconds to reach 100 degrees Celsius. Then I tested Cryonaut Extreme, and it took 4 minutes and 24 seconds to reach 100 degrees Celsius. And then I tested TGPP10, which is actually a thermal putty. It's not meant to be used like this. Uh, I figured I would test it anyways, but impressively, it did reasonable. It took 4 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, here you can see a picture of what the thermal putty looks like in between. So you can, you can tell it didn't squeeze out as much as a thermal paste would, uh, and that's because it is viscous. Um, that's also why I use it on VRAM and VRMs on uh, video cards because it's great at transferring heat and, and getting into all the crevices and it's not going to dry up like thermal paste would. So if you guys are going to be doing copper shim jobs on your cards, I'd really strongly recommend trying out uh, a thermal putty instead of thermal paste for that application. Still use paste on the die. I think that makes sense, but you know, it'd be interesting to try this on one of my GPUs and just see how it does. Um, I am just mining Ethereum on most of them, so it probably would work okay, and, and I don't think I would have to take it apart as often, because as you guys probably know, thermal paste typically dry out over time and many heat cycles, and if we're running them fairly hot, um, you'd have to replace it after a while. This stuff doesn't bake the same way. It doesn't uh, boil or anything like that. So yeah, I think it could be like a, 
a good alternative even to using carbonate, which is something that would be considered a low maintenance option for uh, thermal paste. I gotta confess, I actually forgot to test the Noctua uh, in this te test apparatus, and that's slightly because my uh, results were less than ideal. I didn't get a huge variance. And I guess what that shows is like, hey, you just should, should have some sort of uh, thermal interface material. And as long as you have something there, it's better than nothing. But I need to rework the test and, and maybe do it again somehow. I'll have to figure that out. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks again for checking out my video. Uh, if you guys want to get notified of future content, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.